um, we're 11 o'clock on the dot. I'll probably just give a few minutes for the uh, rest of the folks to join us. I guess just out of curiosity, uh, can you guys hear me? Can you see the screen? Uh, if you can't, uh, maybe you could drop in on the chat. Uh, let me know everything's working. That'd be great. Right. Hey, hey, thanks, Hassan. Yep, I guess you, can, you guys can hear me. So, yep, 11.01. Hey, Maria, thanks. Okay, so I guess just before we get started, um, yeah, so this is like a, you know, webinar, right? So, you know, it's, it's hard to be, uh, get engagement and in, in, in being interactive and all, but so please, if you have, I guess, you know, given that the, we have probably 12 participants here, group, relatively small group, if you have any questions, um, yeah, please feel free, I guess, to drop in on the chat. Uh, I'll just regularly check the channel. And of course, if there's anything, uh, uh, and we have a short Q&A session as well. Okay, maybe just one, one or two minutes more. Um, joining in. of time that's like less than one than more than less than one minute actually 30 seconds but let's get started right so thanks everyone for taking the time and joining today's uh, API days workshop where we'll be talking about contextual MFA with off zero so my name is John I'm a solutions engineer at off zero so prior to joining off zero I was a solutions architect developing web apps and SaaS products um, and in, in that journey, I actually used Off Zero. So it was kind of like a natural progression to join a company that, you know, um, where I enjoyed using its products and hopefully uh, contribute to its growth as well. So my role at Off Zero is pretty simple, and that's to help customers be successful with the platform. So I do hope, you know, through to this workshop, I can help you guys uh, somewhat on that journey as well. So thanks again for taking the time and joining today's session. So in case you need to reach me, um, after this session as well, please feel free to reach me at my email, a Twitter handle there, or LinkedIn as well. All right, so for this agenda, uh, really, we'll just probably spend some two, three minutes just talking about what Off Zero is so that everyone kind of has the uh, same, on, is on the same page about what Off Zero is, what it does, uh, kind of problems we solve. And then we jump straight into the demonstration where we will actually take an integration integrated with Off Zero and in that process also enable contextual based MFA. We will follow with a QA session. Right, so what is Off Zero? Right, so Off Zero is a service for application builders to authenticate and authorize users into their applications. Authentication and authorization has been around for a very long time, right, decades, but it is an ever-changing and evolving landscape. New security threats emerge, new best practices, standards kind of evolve over time, as well as new ways to do authentication are constantly being developed. For example, the re you know, recent like sign-in with Apple ID and the up-and-coming web opt in um, developers that have to build and maintain an in-house or legacy identity system, they often tell me they deal with, do it with a lot of uh, pain and frustration, right? Deep learning curve in understanding the various security protocols. Uh, then there is all the expectation of building and maintaining a bug-free version of it. And kind of top it all off that one of the greatest concern around there is that developers typically aren't security experts themselves. So there's often the worry that, you know, whatever they're building or maintaining, um, whether it is actually secure or not. So what has done is that we've taken all these years of know-how, 
best practices and security expertise and package it into a service so that developers or application builders can simply pick it up, you know, use it and not have to worry about identity. In line with what our mission statement is, where we want to secure the world's identities so that innovators like yourselves can focus on innovation. Right. And so just to kind of round that 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 off a little bit. So Officer is kind of like a service that sits in this middle circle here where we can handle your B2C, B2B, and B2E use cases. And we can connect you know, any type of applications uh, with any type of um, identity providers or directories. So for example, if you had a web app, you could connect it easily to a custom database, your own database, you know, one of those enterprise connections, like maybe Azure AD, Google G Suite, Active Directory, et cetera. Your social logins, like Google sign in, Apple sign in with Apple ID, Right, and we can integrate with a host of external services as well, right? And to kind of like top that all off, we also have the ability to you know manage user management. For example, authorization models such as role-based access control. We have built-in security features, and and kind of last but not least, it is an extensible platform where you can extend Ofsteros capabilities uh, beyond its core uh, behaviors. So sorry, I'm actually out of bat. So. Let me just plug that in. Right. Okay, so with that context, let's actually just jump in into the uh, this demonstration today. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do in, in today's demonstration really is we just go ahead and create an officer tenant, kind of walk you through that process and then integrate an application, an existing application to use officer for authentication and authorization, right? And because it's an existing application, there are existing users. So one of the first problems we encounter is that how do, you, how do you enable existing users to actually continue to sign in into your application once you switched over to Office 0? So we kind of cover that really quickly. And last but not least, you know, we come to the, 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 I guess the workshop, which is to implement the contextual MFA with Office 0. Just gonna pause there, you know, are there any questions, I guess, in, 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 feel free to put in the chat. I'm just kind of looking at my little iPad here um, to see if there's any questions. Oh, seems all good. All right, so let, with that, let me just kind of switch over out here and yep, share my browser. Right, so kind of to get started, the first thing you need to do is to pop over to offshore.com and click to there. Right. Uh, and this is to sign up for an Ofstro account. And it's as simple as just waiting for it to load. Uh, it's as easy as just entering your email and a password or choosing to sign up with one of these social providers here, right? And once you sign up for an Off0 account, Off0 will actually direct you to create an Off0. And what you can see here is part of our public cloud offering, which allows you to create an Office Zero instance in either Europe, Japan, or the US region in a multi tenanted public cloud environment. Right? In this demonstration, I do have an existing tenant. So, what I'm going to do here is just going to click the cancel button there. To you know, sign up for an Office Zero account and create an Office Zero tenant, uh, you'll be kind of redirected to what we see here, the Office Zero management dashboard. It is a graphical user interface for you to manage your tenant configuration. Right. Uh, Sidetrack there a little bit. Um, because we're an API first company, right? The API days, we're an API first company. We have all the tenant management features that you see here um as apis so for example if you're interested we do have documents documenting our authentication apis as well as management apis so for example if i click on the management apis right you can see the, all the end api endpoints that of zero actually exposes uh, as well as documentation on how you can actually, uh, on how to actually use them. Right. Yep. 
So just um, happened in the last API days workshop as well. Um, <laughs> that get your processing really gets really slow doing the you know sharing the screens and doing the talk as well. Um, yeah. Let's exit this page for now. Right. So coming back to the slides, you know, essentially we've created an off zero tenant. So I think you know we could probably zoom through this workshop. Okay. Um, it's really so what I'm going to do, uh, if you build on mine, is I'm just going to switch off my video um, as well. So hopefully that helps speed things up a little bit. All right. So let's let me cross that out. Uh, we have created an off zero tenant. Right. So the next thing we want to do is to integrate an existing application to use off zero for authentication. And for that, I do have an existing application here. Uh, and this is, you know, uh, this, is this is a hotel booking website, right? The company name is Travel Zero, and it is currently using an in-house identity solution, right? So for example, uh, maybe click login here, right? Oops, no, this is not, no. make sure I refresh that. Just let me just check this settings. Right, that should be great, but um, might have some change. Yeah, right. So it kind of, if you notice, that it's currently using an in-house identity solution uh, and supporting basic username password authentication. Right. Um, so let's kind of replace this with Auth0. So to do that, we first need to head over back over to the Auth0 dashboard here, right, and register the Travel Zero application with, within Auth0. And to do that, we click create application. See that Auth0 supports a wide, okay, so Auth0 basically asks you a couple of questions here uh, so that they can generate for you the appropriate quick starts, SDKs, as well as tenant configuration. And you can see here that Auth0 supports a wide range of application types. So from your native app, single page web applications, regular web apps, as well as machine to machine applications. So for example, let's go ahead and create a regular web app today. I'm going to select that and click create. This question you know, Austria will ask at this point is what is the text that you're using for your project? And out of the box, Austria supports over 64 ready to use that you can simply pick it up, drop it in your app and you're up and running. We have for regular web apps, we have, I guess, about 15 different SDKs here for you to get started on your project. Go ahead with Java. And then Officer is going to give us a couple of questions here. Right. Uh, question there, uh, Wilson, uh, probably this question is probably swing by at the end um, just to address how. What, maybe why you're not being able to sign up there. Right. Once you selected the your tech stack, Officer will give you a couple of options, right? The first is that if you're building a brand new app or just want to explore Officer's features, then Officer provides a sample app that comes preceded with your tenant settings that you can download and install and use it as a base for a new app or as a playground to explain or sandbox to explore Officer's features. But what's the most likely in typical use cases and in our use case today, we have an existing application. And Officer provides step-by-step -step instructions on how we can integrate our applications with Officer. And we provide what we call live documentation. Let me just slowly scroll it down, right? Uh, so we provide what we call like live documentation, which are snippets of code that you see here that comes preceded with your tenant settings, right? Um, for example, my security uh, client ID here. Um, and it just makes things you know, so much simpler for you to copy and paste it into your app. And it's just little things like this that Austria does that developers really appreciate us for. Right, so just like in any good cooking show, uh, what I've done is I've copied all this code and pasted it into the Travel Zero application. It's kind of like now sitting behind a feature flag I have in Travel Zero, which I am going to into settings and toggling, right? Right, so, right. 
So uh, once the, so the, in goes the app and out it comes big with of zero SDKs, right? So now when I click login, right? Um, the user is redirected to of zero where of zero asking uh, the user to uh, first, oh, sorry. So now when the user logs in, the user is redirected to uh, of zero and of zero is handling the authentication request. And what you see here is what we call the universal login experience, which is of zero's implementation of the login flow. Um, and just a quick word on, on this page here, this is fully customizable, right? Um, so, you know, if, if you, this uh, out of the box kind of look and feel doesn't suit you, you have, you have the full ability to actually rip and replace the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Right, so kind of just coming back, you know, what we have done, right? we have actually created the Off0 tenant. And at this point, we have already integrated the application to use Off0 for authentication, right? So we've case we've basically implemented it into the travel zero website and so let's actually just cross it out as well so it kind of brings us to the point now okay we have an existing application we have existing users now how can we allow these existing users to continue logging into the application without any you know without having the need for them to re-register or reset their passwords right essentially how can we enable them to continue to log in seamlessly provides the ability to actually connect to your existing database right and we call them custom database connections so if we come back to the dashboard here on the left you can see in the menu items here we have something called connections now of zero provides multiple ways for you to authenticate your users into your applications we call them connections right and we abstract these connections away from your applications so that you can mix and match different forms of authentication according to your application requirements. So for example, you have one app that wants to support social logins and maybe a username password authentication, but for a separate app, maybe you wanted to support passwordless form of authentication. So you can mix and match in those scenarios. But coming back to our use case here, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. <coughs> are going to create a database connection. Right? And you can think of a database connection as simply as a repository of username and passwords. Uh, in our use case here, we have a database connection. Just to show you how you set it up um, if you were integrating your application with Offstroke. So for example, let's just give it a name, say legacy database there. <clears throat> right, and you can see also supports standard settings you would expect out of any identity platform. For example, if you require a username, for example, if you needed to customize your password policies according to OWAP standards, right? So you can configure that as well per database that you create. Uh, but what we're really interested in is in this custom database tab, right at this top here. Okay. Off0 will store all users into the Off0 database. Uh, suppose our platform is a principle of extensibility. And what you're about to see here is an example of how you can extend the platform beyond its core behavior to meet specific customer needs, right? So if I, for example, you flick this use my own database toggle switch here, we gain the ability to fully, to override the key functions of this database and provide our own implementation for it. So we're in the login tab here, right? This script will be triggered on every login and we need to provide a JavaScript function that takes in an email and a password fairly against the external database and then return the results back in the callback. Okay. And Offshore provides several templates to help you get started to connect to your external database, whether it is a direct connection to, say, MongoDB or via an API um, to existing identity service. Right. So in this way, you can slowly migrate your applications over to Off0. Right. Without this, you would have to do a kind of like a bulk migration of your, all your apps at one time, uh, which you know increases the risk and complexity. With this here, we can actually 
now log in our users uh, into the application, our existing users into the application. Um, but just just on that note as well, you know, many of our customers actually you know don't want to have to maintain uh, this legacy ident uh, this legacy system or database. In fact, they want to migrate users to Off Zero, right? But more importantly, they want to migrate their users over to Off Zero without any impact to the end user experience. So Off Zero can be called lazy migration, which allows you to migrate your users over to Off Zero kind of dynamically as a user logs in. So just let me quickly just show you how that is done. So if we came back to settings here in the database, you can see that we have a toggle switch called import users to Off Zero, right? If you flick this switch on, then you would migrate those users over to Off Zero as kind of lazy migration. And there's a learn more link here. If I click that, it has a flow chart that can explain this much better than I can. So, right. So with lazy migration, if you can see this flow chart here, um, the first time you're, okay, so we've created the custom database script. The first time your user is coming from your external database is trying to log in into Off0, Off0 will check if the user is in Off0. In this case, no. Off0 will trigger that custom database script that we wrote, validate those credentials against the external database. And if they are valid, Off0 will actually store that user and not hash that password into the Off0 database. Right. The same user logs in, because he's in already in Off0, Off0 will handle that validation request and validate those credentials. If they are valid, Off0 will then log the user in. And that's how many of our customers can very quickly migrate over to Off0 irrespective of the password hashing algorithms used. Without lazy migration, you wouldn't have to do a bulk import and all your applications have to be migrated over to Off0 in one big bang, right? Increasing that risk and complexity. Uh, and just for example, at last year, our biggest customers migrated something like 3 million users over the course of three weeks, lazy migration. Right, so kind of we talked about that. Let's just quickly see it in action. So, uh, if I come back to my use into the Off0 dashboard here and click users, we there's a users dashboard here where we can see the existing users in my tenant. There's only three of us here. Um, so let's actually just come back here. I can show you that I have an existing user that resides in an external database. Right? So it's actually a Postgres SQL database. I'm going to log in with these user credentials so we can kind of see action there. Right. Using password there. Um, so as I start trying to log in here, we're connecting with my external database and it's slowly actually migrating that user in. So can you see, see there? no impact to the end user experience. In fact, you know, we've replaced the whole identity stack, but the user is actually oblivious to it. If I head back over to the Off0 dashboard here, I just refresh the screen, right? You can see that Off0, oh, I've been migrated over to Off0 right here. Coming back, you know, again to the slides here, right? Just, right we've essentially uh, migrated the uh, to Off0. Right. Let's take a look at now, you know, within this application that I've logged in into, right? You, um, kind of you, if I drop down and click this menu here, you can see that I am able to access my building information, right? Further security checks here, no prompt for, you know, for me to do MFA, for example, so I can just easily view my credit card details here. So let's see how we can use Off0 kind of to implement contextual MFA, right, to trigger MFA at this point, right, to improve the security posture. Right, so if we come back over to the Off-Zero dashboard um, and click and go into security, right, there, there is uh, an item here called multi-factor authentication. So a little bit about, you know, MFA. So, you know, there's always a balance between um, the, I guess, uh, there's always a balance between security and usability. 
And keeping applications secure without negatively impacting the end user experience can be challenging. FA uh, improves the security posture when applied incorrectly can cause frustration to users. Contextual based, contextual MFA, on the other hand, can, will prompt users uh, only on specific conditions when the user is requesting for elevated permissions or, or they're you know, requesting for access to certain uh, protected resource, for example. All right. So with Off0, as you can see here in the, in the dashboard, we do support um, several factors, MFA factors, and displayed in this clean UI here. All right, the first you can see here is we do support web uh, with five, which is your kind of your roaming authenticators there. We do support also web end with device biometrics. It's more like your platform authenticators, like your MacBook, for example, if you had a fingerprint sensor. We do also support one-time passwords, for example, using a Google Authenticator or similar. We also have something called push by Austral Guardian, right? So this is uh, enables your users to receive a push notification uh, for MFA, and we provide it. Uh, we have this app called the uh, Austral Guardian, which is installable on iOS and Android devices. Uh, but we do also provide it as an SDK so that you can actually embed it within your native app so that your users receive a push notification uh, through your branded app. We do also support SMS or voice call. Uh, email uh, email link or code uh, as well as dual security right so kind of how to set this up uh, in off zero is that all we need to do is select the factors that we want to support so in this case I've um, enabled uh, Google Authenticator enabled it via push notification as well as SMS right so once we have chosen and selected the factors that we want to enable the next thing we need to do is decide when we want to actually trigger MFA Right, so we have the options here, never, right? Uh, we do have the ability to actually use of zero's internal kind of risk engine that we have uh, that can detect if it's a high risk login, right? We return the kind of confidence score and depending on that score, we can decide whether to trigger MFA or not. Or we can always do select always, which is, you know, and then we prompt for MFA there. But it's kind of a high friction flow there and kind of a way of doing it. So we're not going to go with that today. Uh, what we're going to do instead is none of these options here, but decide when we want to trigger MFA using what we call off zero rules. Right? And that brings us to rules. Right, so again, off zero is an extensible platform. It has several extensible points, but rules are, you know, probably my favorite here. So what are rules? Rules are custom JavaScript snippets of code that you can write they will be executed as part of your authentication pipeline, right? So kind of when you think about this, um, you have the ability to now customize your whole authentication and authorization flow, right? And so you can do things like customizing your access tokens, doing maybe attribute-based um, authorization there, um, or even, for example, what we're going to do here today, contextual MFA, right? So kind of just to cement that idea a little bit let me create a rule just uh, what the rule is so when you try and create a rule of zero has several you know templates to help you get started with, uh, around the most common scenario so for example uh, around access control multi-factor and reaching a user profile etc but let's go ahead and create an empty rule so like I said, a rule is nothing but a JavaScript function. Think of it like a serverless function, right? That takes in, that gives you a user object. It contains information about the user, a context object that contains information about the current uh, authentication request. And depending on how you call the callback will affect the outcome of your authentication. So if we just step back over, you know, to the rules uh, dashboard here, you can see kind of a couple of the rules that I've set up can do things like enriching the user profile. Right? So within the rule, while well, users authenticating, you can make an API call to Clearbit, for example, pull the information about the user and update the user profile. And this could be even your internal service uh, that you have information about the user. You can get and create contact from Salesforce or your CRM tools. Uh, you can even integrate it with your marketing campaigns, automatically send out emails, etc. 
Uh, but what we're interested in, in is this rule that I've set up here, a contextual MFA step up, right? Let's just turn that on into this rule here to kind of just walk through how it, how it works. Right. <clears throat> a rule is nothing but just a JavaScript function, right? And here, over here, we're writing some custom logic to decide that when the user in the Travel Zero application is making a, an authorization request for sensitive scopes. And in this case, what is deemed as a sensitive scope or sensitive operation is when the user is requesting a read payment on an update payment scope. In this case, we read the credit card details, for example. And when we detect that is the case, we will force MFA, right? And so uh, just a little bit more as well, Offzero, like I mentioned, has that um, what we call anomaly detection, like returns a confidence score. You could also depend on the confidence score to decide whether you want to trigger MFA or not. So the confidence score is built up on things like IP reputation, new device login, impossible travel, and a host, host, and whole host of other signals across our tenants. We derive a confidence score, and you can also trigger MFA based on that as well. Right. So here, you know, we've enabled MFA. Let's actually now see what happens. So I'm just going to log the user out. I'm going to just show you that when I'm logging in, I'm not being prompted for MFA. And let's see, I enter my uh, username, password again. Right, you can see that I'm not being prompted for MFA. Now, however, when I start to, um, you know, try and go into my building, right, making an authorization request, requesting for these additional permissions, right? So the rules are being kicked in. And what you can see here now then as a result is redirecting me to actually uh, enroll for MFA. So I, in this demonstration, I haven't enrolled for MFA uh, and that's why this, this step here is necessary. So I'll click redirect there. Right. And here you can see that it's asking me to enroll for MFA. And remember that we, en we, we selected or enabled the following factors, either SMS, Google Authenticator, or in this case, a Travel Zero um, application, which is really the push notification method. Now, because I have an application already on my mobile phone here, I already don't click that. And what I'm going to do here is just kind of share my mobile screen as well. Um, hopefully that works. And so you can kind of see, you know, um, us receiving the, or me receiving the push notification. Um, so let me screen mirroring. That's You can see here, I have a native application or Travel Zero. What I'm going to do, I'm going to enroll uh, this device here. So I'm going to just scan that there. Okay. Let's say I've safely recorded this code. I'm going to hit continue there. And you can see then in the through the daily web, I receive a push notification, which I'm going to grant um, or authorize it to continue, right? And so kind of just like that, now able to view my credit card details, right? So kind of like a kind of quick summary around this, you kind of notice that, you know, that the setting up MFA or contextual MFA within Office Zero is really simple. If you notice, we did not make any code changes to our application. We simply enabled what MFA factors we would like to support and then designated when it, was, it would trigger using Office Zero rules. And you can very easily extend this simple use case for more context aware situations, such as maybe an IP address or a different uh, geographic location where you want to trigger the MFA. And in fact, you know, it's very simple to logic um, to trigger MFA, um, I guess you can write any arbitrary, as long as you can perform, um, I guess, code the scenario uh, in, in off zero using an off zero rule, right? So, um, yeah. So let me just come back here and let me just, um, yep, kind of cross that out over there, right? So. 
Yeah, so kind of quick summary. Uh, in today's session here, we quickly went over how you would, you know, integrate your application with Off0, how it is possible for you to easily migrate those users over to Off0 as well. And then we looked at, you know, how we can actually implement contextual MFA using Off0. And that was primarily using uh, our extensible features as well, such as an Off0 rule, which allows you to write custom logic um, as part of your authentication and authorization flow. Right, so essentially, you know, bring me to the end of my uh, demonstration, and I guess we're pretty good for time as well. So, you know, happy to uh, spend the rest of this time here answering any questions um, that you guys may have. Um, yeah, so kind of, Wilson, I think that Ian will probably reach out to you, um, or probably has already reached out to you on that issue, but any questions around uh, today's demonstration or maybe about off zero in general? Did it all make sense? Any feedback? Oh. So, so this is contextual. So thanks, Frank, uh, for your question. I'm just going to read it out. Since the contextual MFA rule is JavaScript, which is uh, manipul manipulate, can be manipulated on a browser side, how do you prevent malicious user from manipulating JavaScript to bypass MFA? So kind of if you notice this, like the triggering of MFA uh, and all this is really happening kind of on, on, on server side here in, in Off0, right? If you're using an Off0 rule, you're calling the APIs, all that is, although, you know, is happening through uh, behind the, on, on server side where we, where we actually, whether the, you know, the, the user passes MFA or not. So, so in, in this situation, no, you, you know, you, you don't have, any way to actually bypass this using, it's not on the front end side or front client, so you can't really manipulate it. Right. Um, and, and maybe to answer your question a little bit deeper, deeper there as well. So uh, maybe just let me share with you, right? So what happens here uh, as well is that when we're actually requesting for building, what we're doing is we're actually requesting, um, making an authorization request to Auth0, right? And we're requesting it to return us with, with certain permissions and so that the, these access tokens are used to communicate with your API backend, right? So if you, so you can't, you can't manipulate it such that you get back an access token that then you can call the, your, your resource server in the backend, right? You have to pass MFA and also handles that all, like I said, so there's no way you can actually manipulate that from the front end. So just, just, just to be clear. Yep, you're welcome, Frank. Uh, how do you compare? How will this compare with header enrichment? Um, so I guess, um, may, okay. So let me kind of play back my understanding of this. So I, I guess, like, um, where you're coming from, uh, Khan, is that if we added certain information in the header and then you send it back to your, you know, communicate with your back end and they inspect headers, etc. So assuming that, that that's what you mean, kind of maybe just let me share with you, you know, how, how Off0 works under the covers, right? So if I go in the debug um, in my app here, um, so under the covers, Off0 uses open ID Connect. So as part of the protocol here, uh, we return, you know, applications, um, ID tokens and access tokens. So you can see here, for example, um, in this app, when the user logs in and made an authorization request, you can see we returned an, an access token and it's in JWT format. And so that what that means is that instead of an opaque token, you get a JWT, your backend or API services can actually validate these access tokens without need. Right, but in this JWT token, you can see, for example, it contains you know custom claims here, which are permissions of what this user is allowed to do. Right, so we don't really, 
headers or input information in headers and pass it to the application or backend. Uh, what we're doing here is really through um, using um, OIDC or OpenID Connect there. What's uh, and final, final authentication and authorize. You're welcome, Khan. Um, so what are the major threats and vulnerabilities that authentication and authorization applications such as of zero are experiencing now? It's a, an interesting question, uh, Wilson. So thanks for that. So maybe kind of like to phrase that uh, differently, right? Rather like, okay, so we do see, I guess, you know, different forms of attacks, etc. Uh, but let me just draw your attention maybe to the security features uh, that Officer has currently to mitigate some of these common problems, right? Um, so one of the, okay, so within this, for example, we have attack protection, right? And so you can see here that we we have something called bot detection. And this is really like a pre-login phase, pre phase where user, before he logs in into Off0, um, uh, we have a risk engine and we can detect whether the user is likely to be a bot or not. So in those cases there, we have what we call bot detection, where we, if we detect a bot, we can actually, and just drill in into that a little bit, it will prompt a capture, right? And so you can actually decide, uh, I guess you can decide whether to show a, a official capture or a Google recapture there. And so with this enable, whenever some sign in, if we detect that he might be a, a bot, then it will prompt a capture. Right? Uh, so that's one thing. So typically, I bought attacks are pretty common. Um, the other one is, um, you know, we have a suspicious IP throttling as well. We get a lot of high velocity kind of attacks trying to you know, log into your tenant, and so we can we can actually throttle it. Um, there's brute, brute force protection as well. So for example, you know, someone's trying to hack it, hack into a specific account or multiple accounts. You kind of detect that as well. And last but not least, I would say, you know, maybe the most successful ones we've seen, or maybe I've seen out in the field here, is credential stuffing attacks, right? And that's how, I guess, Disney was breached, for example, using credential stuffing attack. So kind of just for all those that aren't familiar with what a credential stuffing attack is, it is an attack that involves the use of previously leaked credentials, right, into the dark web. And they're using those set of credentials and trying to log in into your service. Right, and it's an automated attack. So with that, we have something called breach password detection, where also maintains its own set of giant database of previous leak credentials. So upon a user login, for example, we can kind of detect whether that is a set of leak credentials. And if it is, you know, there are various things you can do. You can block the account um, uh, if you wanted to. And if you block the account, the only way to kind of unblock it is through a password reset. Uh, as well as then we have no different various ways to notify admins or the user as well. So, yeah, just kind of high level as well. And, and one of the other things, you know, common security vulnerabilities would be like developers implementing their own identity service. Um, so sometimes they don't handle things like cross-site request forgery, et cetera, using Austro SDKs. For example, we all handle that out of the box. Hope that answered your question, Wilson. Yeah. You will come listen here. Yeah. It's left on the clock. Uh, were there any further questions? All right. I guess if there aren't any further questions, then you know they said um, uh, the, the most valuable thing in, in in life, I guess, is is time. <laughs> so. Okay, sorry. So, okay, now zero. I got another question from Wilson. So I can't give you back your time now. <laughs> but uh, what can off zero? Uh, I guess what can off zero within security monitoring? What does off zero do? I guess in terms of security monitoring. So, yeah, as you can see here under security monitoring. So off zero has uh, monitors all tenant activity, right? So any of the events that happen on your off zero tenant, right? It is actually logged as an event in off zero. Uh, and so with that respect, we have all this information. Uh, we have various ways for you to actually ingest this information. So one of it, um, I guess, from a security standpoint, is ability to ability to actually stream these log events out in almost real time. 
right? So you can you can actually um, pipe your logs out or stream your logs out to your, I guess, log service providers, or if you do an event-based architecture, for example, then you can pipe it out to your like AWS Event Bridge or your Azure Event Grid as well. Right? So that's possible um, for monitoring or piping into your security incident monitoring tool as well. So that's that's what we have around monitoring. Yep. So I guess kind of with five on the clock, um, there doesn't seem to be any more questions coming in. So just, just before we end, I guess, you know, again, feel free, you know, to kind of reach out to me on any of these channels if there are any further questions. Also, you know, we are, you know, Off0 is here at the API days, we have a booth, so please feel free to drop by and say hi on, you know, and we can address any questions you have there as well. And kind of with that, then, you know, give you back the gift of time, which is, I guess, five minutes left for you. So thanks again for taking the time, really appreciate it. If you have any feedback for me as well, how I can improve, uh, please, feel free to drop me a note. So thanks again. So take care and see you guys again.